What is happening, people? Hey, guys. So it is uh, first week of July, and uh, everybody goes on vacation July and August. It's hot time of the year. And, you know, many vacations uh, are around fishing trips, if you know what I mean. Hey, guys, we appreciate all the support we've been getting for this channel. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate all the support we've been getting. And uh, so anyway, you find yourself at the lake and uh, you want to catch some fish. You don't know the lake. You don't know the layout of the lake. You may not have great electronics. So if you find yourself in that situation, one really great place to find crappie um, is, is around a bridge because it provides vertical structure, it provides shade, uh, you have drop-offs, river channels run through, and sometimes it don't necessarily have to be a deep water around the bridge. Uh, you know, maybe early in the morning, the bridge has shallower water, fish will move up, stage around that structure, feed, the sun comes up, water warms up, tra boat traffic, fish push back down, and then come back in the afternoon. But many bridges like this one here, you see behind me at Clarksville, that I'm sitting under, uh, and we're at Kerr Lake. Uh, you know, you could catch crappie here all day long and all night long. The only drawback to major bridges like this is the fishing pressure that's on these bridges. But uh, worst comes to worst, it's a great place to come and catch some fish. Uh, so real quick, I'm going to uh, put my other camera up, and I'm just going to go around these bridge pilots. And not all bridge pilings are the same. Why some bridge pilings hold fish many times has something to do with current, or the way the current comes by, water depth, drop off. So there's many different reasons why a particular bridge piling holds fish and some don't. So if you've been following my channel, you'll know that like last week when I was fishing, there was uh, maybe six bridge pilings across. One held the majority of the fish for whatever rhyme or reason. I think the reason was that there was a brush pile around the base of one of them, and that was the particular reason there was more structure there for the fish to hang around. So anyway, I'm going to get my other camera out, and we're going to take a look at, uh, at, at how these fish are related around these bridge pilings. Not only around the bridge piling, but between these pilings out in the shady area, those crappie are gonna follow that shade. Find the shade, find the crappie. Especially on a bluebird day like today, it's really clear, it's gonna get really hot. And plus you can get in the shade and you can beat the uh, summer heat a little bit. So, hey guys, stay with us. And let's go take a look. You can see the column coming in to zoom that is see you got a few fish a lot of fish hanging up underneath it right up under the shadow see them have it hanging under the shadow line right there see it's a beam going across Turn the scope, a lot of fish right up underneath it. There's how many fish is up underneath it. And you can see how the fish are related. Now that's a lot of fish. It could be white birch. few crappy up underneath that bridge right there see that cross member cross member between the bridge is right there let me get a closer look at that so you can see fish are hanging out underneath that cross member. See on the top is a cross member. That opening is looking, that live scope's looking 
through. It's a cross member on the bottom. So you can see how those fish are related up underneath them. And they're just a tremendous amount of fish. Now that's looking straight down the side of the collar. Now, this would be a good time to uh, cast allow the lure to fall slow through the strike zone. And I'm going to show you something. So that is, see that's looking out across the shadow line. See all that shadow? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift this up. You see that shadow line across there? See that shadow line? You watch, as long as I stay in the shadow line, I can find fish. As soon as I turn that live scope away from the shadow line, boom. No fish. Now watch, I'm going to get the boat right back in the shadow line. See the fish coming? Boom. It's important to stay in that shadow line. I'm going to go up here and check this pilot, this pilot, see it's an old railroad pilot, see it right here, and uh, so let's take a look at it, and it's most of the time, the crappie will orientate, if they can, on the current side, so we see that there's some fish up tight up against it. Look out front. See, there's some fish orientated right out front. Yeah, there's a bunch of fish. And here again, we're going right into the shade. And, uh, You know, them fish are going to like that shade. See, they all around the front. I had one on. There's one right there. Right on that side of that shade. Small fish. I think we can do this as long as I don't have any boat traffic. I don't have my camera secured down. But real quick, let's just talk about a couple of ways to fish this, these bridge pilots. Well, of course, the bridge pilot runs this way. We've got the uh, current pushing this way. And a lot of it's going to depend on how hard the wind's going to blow. So one way that we can do, now see, i got a double rig on, and I've been vertical jigging with that, but just for demonstration purposes. So I'm about 25 feet away from the end of the structure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch out past the end. And I'm going to allow it to sink, counting about 10. Because the fish was anywhere from 12 to about 16 foot deep. And I'm going to flip the bail. And I'm going to allow that lure to fall through the strike zone. And, uh, and I'm going to wind it kind of slow. And I'm feeling for a, a, a bump. I like to feel that thud, you know what I mean? And so I'm basically fishing across the end of the bridge pile. Ah, uh, you had it. All right, let's try that again. Now that's just free falling. Two jigs is probably free, free falling a little faster than I want it to. About an eighth of an ounce jig would be perfect for this. So it's just falling through the strike zone slowly. I'm just continuing to move it. I would use, if I was fishing this way, boom. If I was fishing this way, I'd want a curly tail. And that way, as the lure, as the lure falls, it's giving me some action. Okay. So that's fishing across the end this way. So let's go around on the other side. 
fished a long way. So I already know for a fact that the crappie are orientated in the shade on the far end of this piling. Now, preferably this is the way I like to fish a piling is the long way because it keeps my lure in the strike zone longer. So I want to be sure I throw past the shadow. I'll pull it right up to it. And I'm going to lie at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's probably 10 feet deep. I'm going to click the bell, and I'm going to just keep in contact with the lure. You notice I got that finger right there on the rod. I'm feeling for a bump. I'm looking for the line to get loose of some type of strike indicator. And I'm going to just keep that lure moving. And the whole time it's moving, it's continuing to fall. And I'm just waiting on a strike. Now, this is my preferred method. Now, on any given day, if you're fishing this vertical structure, you're gonna have to play around with it and to see. There may be a particular angle the crappy hit better, uh, bringing the lure past the end, down the side. One side may produce more strikes than the other. And that's all in relationship to how they're orientated to actually feed on bait that's actually swimming by. Here again, I'm fingers on the rod. Feeling for a bump. Allowing that lure to fall right by that column. And this bridge doesn't have quite as much shade on it as, uh, say, the bigger bridge does. Boom. There he is right there. And the whole time that lure is falling, it's called a California quick release. The whole time that lure is falling, I'm continuing to move in it, not getting in a hurry, and the lure just looks so natural, just falling slowly through the water column. Let's move over to the next uh, column. Now look, this time I'm a vertical jig. I'm gonna get right on top of them, straight down. Boom. That didn't take long, did it? Small crappies, though. All right, before I float by it, I'm not gonna run the trolling motor. I'm gonna lower it. That falls, at them two eighths, them two eighths fall pretty quick, they just got bit. They fall pretty quick, a lot quicker than I would want them to. They like something falling slow. right there. Boom. Now this time he hit the gold on the top. Just a small crack. Now since I'm on this side I'm going to pitch over there. Cast about five feet past. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, flip the bail, boom, bit already. It's just, you know, it's just that simple. And like I said, I wish tail on would be better for what I'm doing here. So that's a little bit better crappy right there. That's that's a 10 inch, 10 and a quarter inch fish. Boom. So I'm here at my third one. How do you want to fish this third one? Do you mean a vertical jig it or do you mean to cast to it? Now really I prefer to cast to the structure first while the boat is not as close. Bigger crappy tend to move off when the boat gets close. And there again these bridges get fished a lot, so I prefer to cast. Now, because I'm on this side, I'm going to cast the opposite way and bring it back into the shade. So I'm casting up, I'm moving it, and I got a big bow in my line because the wind's blowing. Now I'm watching that bow. That bow is going to indicate a strike. So I'm watching my line, watching my line. And you see how very little I'm winding this? Once I feel that that lure is out of the shadow line or the strike zone, I'm going to wind it in. 
Okay, guys. So uh, let's just recap what we've done. So we're fishing bridges, summertime, looking for that shade. We talked about a couple of ways of actually fishing the bridge pilot. We can vertical jig it. We can cast across the ends. We can cast the long way, which I prefer the best. Now, I know you're going to say, well, what if I don't know the depth of the fish? Most people have some sort of uh, depth finder and it will indicate, even the oldest ones will indicate the depth. I use my old one down here for years. And uh, it gives you a pretty good feel of how deep the fish are. You use your rod, whether it's 10 feet, 7 feet, measure out, count it down a couple of different ways. And if you use an eighth ounce jig, it's going to fall approximately a foot to foot and a half uh, per second. So if you count in seconds. So if I'm casting up and thinking the fish are 12 feet deep. I count eight. It's a pretty safe bet even if I'm a little high. If I don't wind it too fast and a lot of it is feel. Uh, once you catch a couple of fish uh, you know you done counted 10 seconds. I waited. I wound a little bit slower that time so as a fisherman you think about what you did. Why did you just catch that fish? And you mimic or you replicate what you just did. And uh, anyway, hey guys, uh, I hope that helps you. Uh, if you're in a strange place and you want to catch some fish, hey, if you're in the Clarksville area, these bridges can produce some fish. Like I said, they get a lot of pressure. And uh, if you got good electronics, you can come to some of these points in this area, find some brush piles and catch some fish too. Uh, that's probably what I would probably prefer to do. But in the heat of the day, like today, I need to get out of the sun because it's cooking my head. And uh, it gives you a great place to come in the shade and, uh, you know, just come out and enjoy the weather. Warm weather and you can sit in the shade and, the, you know, the sun don't burn you up. But there's probably 30 pilings across here. The first two that we just fished right here had a lot of fish. The third one, not so much. There's a few fish on that third one but not as much the first two I should say the second and the third one had more fish on it the third one not so much and I may go on across here and I may get down here about number 16 and boom all of a sudden there's a bunch of fish there because someone may have sunk some brush around it so it may take you a little time fishing these pilings to find one that produces more fish now uh, a little just a little note here so these many times early in the morning these crappy will pull up shallower around these pilings because it provides structure a place for them to hide and they will feed in the afternoon it's the same way they're five o'clock getting on in the afternoon six seven o'clock the sun's going down i've seen crappy move i've sat on the pilings bridges before for two or three hours Two hours before dark, boom, the crappy rise right up to six, eight feet deep, and man, they just hit everything in the water. So early in the morning, late in the evening, if you fish during the day, you're gonna have to fish deeper. Boat traffic is gonna get heavier, so the fish are gonna push down. But anyway, I hope this helps you uh, if you're out and, and fishing. I wanted to go over that, wanted to show you some uh, uh, live scope and how these fish orientate around these bridge pilings. I hope this helps you. Anyway, hey guys, share this channel. Hey, don't forget, forget to hit that subscribe button. Share this channel with someone that you know that enjoys the outdoors, fishing, and hunting. We appreciate all the support we've been getting for this channel. Hey, you guys are great. And uh, as always, we always got a boat coming when we're talking to the camera. Anyway, I'm going to wait a second. Always, we appreciate all the support we've been getting for this channel. Click that like button. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Wildlife Adventures. And as always, you remember, it's a wildlife, and I'll see you on the